we're in Patagonia for an epic ride. Don't you think this is going to be the most epic ride we've ever done? Dude, it's going to be. So what does an epic ride involve? Mountains, great food, views, trails, adventure, and people. And we've been invited by Niner to check out their brand new Rip Niner RDOs. We'll ride them out here in Patagonia. And I got the 27.5. What? Yeah. I'm riding the Niner Niner. Right, you ready? Let's do it. That way. It's a bit windy. We were joined by an incredible crew from Patagonia Bikers. Gabriel Benoit, AKA Gabo, owner of Patagonia Bikers, our guide and provider of good times. An ex World Cup downhill rider, he moved away from the city to be a fly fishing guide in Patagonia and has spent the last 10 years discovering trails in this area. Edicio Vasquez, AKA The Man, one of the best drivers I've ever seen tackling the most tech off road, all with a constant smile on his face, plus this guy can fix anything. He fashioned a roller bearing for the trailer wheel out of a drill bit. You can see easily why they call him The Man. Juan Zamorano, AKA Juanito, a perfect guide with a bag full of snacks, tools, and first aid. His funny one-liners kept the crew entertained. And Nicholas Ferretto, AKA Nixon, a talented photographer who's always sneaking into the bushes to get the shot. To complement our crew, we were joined by two American riders, Teal Stetson Lee and Jordan Carr. Here, like us, wide-eyed and excited to see what the beautiful region of Patagonia has in store for mountain bike riders. We arrived with just enough time to get on the bikes in the afternoon, we headed for the hills. We uplifted as far as we could and then pedaled up further, popping out of the trees and onto the moon. The trail wound through the crazy forest with some amazing flow and perfect grippy loam. Blinded by a bit of light, I thought I was a stick, and then just tried to dodge that, and it was just a piece of grass. <laughs> <laughs> you hit that. <laughs> yeah. After riding that incredible trail, fun, speed, and a few nose dives were out of our system. It was time to see where these bikes could take us. With lots of local knowledge from Gabo, we set up a route. The plan was to head towards the Argentinian border get dropped by the truck and head into the back country. We attempt to pass three lakes, Dionco, Mustericio and Norte. Some hiker bike and fire road trucking would end the day at a campsite where we'd meet a day show and the truck. Day two, we'll use the truck to save the legs and gain a few more meters, then climb up and over a big saddle and down a big descent where Gabo promised Blake he can do some fly fishing. So we left the populated area of Koyake and headed into the wilderness. So we've just arrived uh, 
two and a bit hours with the location where we're going to get dropped off can then cruise up through these valleys and mountains for about 30 kilometers till another big lake uh, this is mate S strong tea super strong caffeine mm. well my boy rider any caffeine tea That, my friends, is the sweetest strawberry you'll ever have. Wild strawberry, my goodness me, it's better than candy. So we've just descended down this mountainside into this valley and we're going across that mountain but through the next valley there. I am not tired, I am buzzing on life right now. We're out in the bloody middle of nowhere and there's a field full of dogs. Not cows, dogs. And then what? And then there's one horse. What the hell? Do they milk the dogs out here instead of cows? <laughs> We pull it across. Let's get up, pull it over. Look at that, man. Over the top. Yeah. Bye, Neil. See ya. How am I gonna get in?
first people we've seen all day, I think. <laughs> yeah, there's loads of horses there as well. Some amazing dogs. Very friendly dogs. Bake? Yeah. It's just rehydrating. Fill in the camel bag. I'm going with two litres. Amazing. First bit of civilization in hours, man. I'm starting to go mental. Is it four, Not really. Is it 420? <laughs> no, it smells like it might be 420. It does around, yeah? Mm. Sure. Mm. I think it's the truck. So we're on this road for 12 kilometers on this fire road. And what's at the end? Uh, Camp and dinner. Dinner and oh. beer and a glass oh. of wine and a pisco. Yeah. Uh. All three of them. Oh. I know a glass of wine and some of that lamb. We've been told there's a spit rose. Can't wait. More fire right there. What an epic day though. What time did we start? Two, I think we started riding. 2 p.m. and it's now quarter past eight p.m. That is a hell of a day. Hell of a day. Look at that thing. What's that, Neil? Beach. Look at that. Oh, man. Wow. Well, today was the start of the epic ride, and it's just been breathtaking the whole way. Yeah, great riding. Some of our GoPros will look so good. Oh man, it, I can't wait. This is—it's been mind blowing. Yeah. Like everywhere you look, is insane. You like look there. Whoa. You look, look over there. Oh, there. It's two dogs whoa. wrestling. No, that's wall. Then that, our food, wall. <laughs> and then we're, we're camping. Yeah, we're just gonna make our tents, pitch tents. Yeah. Yeah. And spend the night out here. I was, you could say in the back country, but I think the whole of Pasconia is oh, technically <laughs> back country. Yeah. It's super wilderness out here. Can't wait to see the stars tonight. Oh man. To the sky! Yeah, to the sky! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, man. Trust me, you know, man. Yeah, I mean, I Go, Neil. You be the. Are you Aono? Are you Aono? I thought the end of the law, Yankee. Like Barcelona is there. I got a room. <laughs> Neil got the best bit. He got no, no way. my first one in and he got the leg or something. <laughs> the thigh. Mm. It was a big piece of meat. Go. We had some more wine, we had some beers. And we watched the stars. We saw the Milky Way, yeah. And then we went to bed about one o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happened. But we camped out over here, it was super cool, super comfortable. It's warm, really it was warm. was really warm. So yeah, we're driving a bit now to a different sort of riding area and then riding down to a river. Blake's gonna go fly gonna fishing. Gonna do some fly fishing, dip a fly. Ooh. I'm gonna do some work, because I'm gonna tell you all about those Niners I wear riding, whilst Blake has a bit of me time. Yeah. Look at this 
<laughs> Look at the state of me. <laughs> Actually, I need a refresher. That. <laughs> oh. oh. Wow. Okay. No, not even. They're, they're all right. They're all good. Even the light ones. Oh. up the fly the fly rod I'm gonna be super nervous like because I've only done it like I have done it for probably only for a month he's been doing it since he was nine oh wow little one huh <laughs> no problem, man. <laughs> no. Whoa, <laughs> little guy, man. You've done this before. Guys, do come to an end. Uh, I'm out. Was the most epic. It ride. was the most epic ride ever. Oh, ever. Ride. Yeah, best trails, best yeah. scenery. Yeah, so good. Yeah. Uh, thanks to Gabo at Patagonia Bikers for showing us around, looking after us, showing us the best time ever. So an email came in one day from Moots Bikes. Would you like to go to Iceland on a bikepacking tour with Sy from GCN and ride one of our lovely titanium bikes? Well, yeah, 
Go so day. So this is Iceland. We're just outside of Reykjavik, getting set up for our ride that starts tomorrow. We're at Ice Bike. So these people guide mountain bike tours around Iceland. Got some amazing vehicles. Check out the tires on this thing. So obviously they need trucks or get virtually anywhere. We're going over sort of near the volcanoes, over the lava fields. We're just planning the trip now, where we're going to be riding getting the bikes ready, getting the kit ready. So check out what's inside here. So this is the bike I'm riding. Uh, me and Sai are sort of revisiting the mountain bike versus gravel bike. We're riding Moots bikes. So I've got the Mountaineer. It's a YBB, they call it. That's a soft tail. I've never ridden one of those before. It's gonna be great for this sort of adventure riding. Plus size tyres, got all my kit. We're trying to work out now what we need to take with us uh, in case of wet weather, obviously food. I've got a sleeping bag in the back of there. I have shot like a full kit list video uh, that should be out already. So check that out if you've not seen that. Falling in love with this bike. Check it out. Always wanted to take it. It's pretty different to what you normally ride, mate. Slightly, but I sort of, I don't know. The more I age, the more I, these bikes appeal to me. Good times, isn't it? The tires are too big on that, basically. Yeah. There's no way. At least it hasn't got a dropper post, but <laughs> yeah. 2.6 inch tires. No, so I've got, my tires are so skinny, they're measured in millimeters. 45 mil gravel tires on there, no suspension. You ever seen that side? That is. I have, mate. I saw one of those in 1998. Soft tail. Yeah. Never ridden one before. It's going to be perfect, mate. Right? It is. Benjamin. Given yeah. how far we've got to ride each day, I think having a little bit less rolling resistance, something a little bit lighter, is going to definitely play into my hands. So where are we going to ride then? Well, we've plotted a 130 kilometer route split over two days. I wanted more and Neil, well, wanted less. We will be riding through the Highlands region, which is in the south of the island, mostly on gravel roads, but with some simple single track thrown in for good measure. And frankly, to stop Neil moaning. We will be starting at the snow line and winding through volcanoes and rivers and glaciers to our overnight hut, and then on around Iceland's most active volcano, Hekla, and back to civilization, or tarmac at least. Check out the rock. What are you thinking about a gravel bike, Si, rather than a mountain bike? I don't know, if I'm completely honest. I reckon both are going to be absolutely awesome. I just can't wait to get started, mate. Still driving towards the start of the ride and we're at about a thousand meters elevation now. Shall we? Let's do it mate. You lead on Fatty. Where we go that way? It's plus size. Plus size model. I'm not gonna lie, if it was all riding on glaciers, I think I'd probably go for that bike. Man, well, that was fun. I feel, I felt a bit reckless, like we're in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> sliding around, but it's unbelievable. Right, back onto gravel, come on then.
some of the nicest sort of double track I've ever ridden. All that sort of volcanic dust. It's just so smooth. It's like, I don't know what it's like. It's not like anything I've ridden before. How is it on the skinny tires? Uh, well, I'm not entirely sure I'm quite as fast as Neil down those hills, uh, but it's still super smooth. Like, I mean, it's incredible. If you, if you realized well, you, you were quite happy with the fact that you were in the middle of nowhere and if you injured yourself, you'd be completely screwed. You could properly let it rip, it'd be mega. Well, it's mega anyway, but just being a bit cautious. And we've just ridden through some steam. What, what is it? It's just like vent Geothermal holes. Geothermal activity, I believe, Neil. And you can feel hot air and it stinks of sulfur and ridden down to this most amazing stream crossing. It's quite a big one. And get rid of the riding shoes. I've got some Vans plimps on. I'm gonna roll up my trousers. <laughs> I'm gonna get very cold. <laughs> nice. Ah, <sighs> uh, that I got wet feet anyway doing that. Yeah, not too bad. How the toes, Si? <laughs> uh, they haven't gone numb yet, but I've got to try. Be as quickly as possible. It's actually not as cold as I thought it was going to be. Good north shore. Go on, Neil. Ah, oh, he made it look easy. <laughs> Neil's going to be cold. Oh, no. Fail. Even worse than the time before. Again. He's doing it again. <laughs> we shall continue. Is the word I think. Unbelievable. Just can't believe how many times I just sort of thought to myself, I've never seen anything so amazing in my life. It just kept happening all day long <laughs> until you got, so, sort of got used to it. Just, I can't believe how much the scenery's changed as well. Just volcanoes, amazing single tracks, amazing gravel roads, riding in sort of that black volcanic ash. Check out this hut. There's nothing like camping food, is there, Neil? <laughs> All this obviously was in uh, various different saddlebags, handlebar bags. And, uh, it's lying. Yeah. So we stayed in this sort of refuge out in the middle of nowhere last night. Did about 70k of gravel roads and single track yesterday. It was amazing. My legs are tired though. And we're sort of behind the most uh, active volcano in Iceland, Hecla. We've seen volcanoes all day yesterday, but what an amazing place. Like, feels like we're really in the middle of nowhere.
I meant for a half half now. Uh, into a headwind. Uh, uh, that is awesome. Most active over there. We've got half times and said, uh, download gaps in the authority. You know where you are when it happens. And apparently, you just will notice seismic activity about 30 to 40 minutes before it goes off. Then it's time just to get out of here. And it's due, apparently. It's been 20 years since it has gone. Well that's it for a couple of days riding in the highlands up in Iceland. Uh, it's been absolutely amazing. We're back in Reykjavik. I'm getting ready to pack the bikes. We're leaving today for the UK. Site is just around the corner, literally at Life. You know the people who make that crazy suspension fork. He's checking out their new gravel bike. So I'm packing the bikes up. Uh, it's crazy, the weather has been amazing whilst I've been here. Two days, no rain at all whilst I'm riding. And that route that we rode up in the highlands, it's only passable for about two weeks of the year. So we've been super lucky. Welcome back you beautiful people. Welcome to Whistler BC in Canada. This is Lord of the Squirrels epic ride and I'm pretty much at the top of my descent. But it didn't start here, did it? It starts all the way down there and I am pretty much at 1800 feet. Well, well, let me just stop myself right there. It is not 1800 feet. It's 1800 meters. That's a big difference. It's going to be a hell of an epic ride. Right. There's no more mistakes. Let's crack on. So, oh man, this is an epic ride for sure. familiar with Lord of the Squirrels is basically set on the west side of Sprout Whistler Mountain. It's a hand-built descent, primary trail, but to get to the top of Lord of the Squirrels trail is no easy task. For me, I hit the Mystic Trail all the way to the top and it was brutal. It was brutal. I'm gonna say it again. It's brutal. It's brutal. Oh, my thighs are on fire. So the route I took to get to Lord of the Squirrels, I jumped onto into the Mystic, then I jumped onto, onto the rocks, and then I got to the top of Lord of the Squirrels. So the total climbing that I'll be doing today on this trail is 5,250 feet and 5,250 feet of descending, which I cannot wait for. The trail rating is a blue descent, but the trail rating for the climb is a black diamond. It's not for the faint-hearted. them fishing, fly fishing, the dream. Hi, it starts. This is Joe, Joey, eh? Actually, he's the cameraman. As you can see, he's riding my Canyon Talk. Big travel, big travel bike. All the way to the top with a camera bag 
Give me all my hard tail. Absolute trooper, Joey is. <laughs> Absolute trooper. Anyway, this is the start of the climb. Oh, we've passed three lakes. Now we're getting to the top. It's hot. But this is where the adventure starts. At the bottom. Right, let's crack on. Slowly. Oh, we. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this is the beginning. The beginning of a, tr a crazy climb. Sirloin climb. It is, it, the whole route is it's all about a, a black diamond climb. And it kind of goes way up here, right to the top. It's hot, <sighs> sweaty, but when you get to the top, there's a lake. I'm gonna go for a dip and we're gonna shred down a nice blue flow trail. Just gotta be careful, this is a two-way trail, so someone could be coming down. Right, <clears throat> see ya. Look at that. That down there, not right there, but over there, that's Creekside, Whistler Village is around the other side. Ah, oh, so beautiful. Feels like we've been climbing for about, what, two hours, but it's been an hour and a half. And we haven't, we've got somewhere from down in the valley to here, but we've got so much more climbing to go. We're not even near the trail that we want to be riding. A little shameless plug, right? The way I found this trail, this route, I've heard of it before, but Without the local knowledge and being at home, kind of went on to the Commute app on my mobile phone or on my desktop just to find who's done the trail, what loops have done it, like who's done the loop. I basically just downloaded the GPX file, synced it to my Garmin, my head unit, and then just followed it from there. Anyway, enough of that. We've got so much more climbing to go. Joey, how are you feeling? You feeling, uh, yeah, he's not feeling very, very wise. Right, <clears throat> let's do more climbing. Right, I was a bit worried because throughout the time I've been here, people have been saying that Lord of the Squirrels is shut but slowly as the uh, week has gone on, it's, it's finally open. So welcome to Into the Mystic, which is a trail that starts right there, but which we're gonna go down and Lord of the Squirrels ex exits right over here. But Lord of the Squirrels is open. Be prepared for some snow patches and hike a bike on and on the rocks. So that's another trail. There's gonna be some snow up the top, but that kind of just adds to the adventure. Uh, another thing to point out up here is no dogs, and no e-bikes allowed on these trails, which uh, you gotta take into consideration that if you bring an e-bike, you won't be able to ride this part of the mountain. And what I've just seen, right, which is quite unnerving, it's this. Did you bring the bear spray? So, uh, Joey's finally caught up. What did you think of that bit of climb? That was disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> did it, uh, did it hurt? Yeah. It's the steep little bits on the corners. They just kill. Done in. The flies are horrendous on this, this year. I've never experienced flies like this in Whistler. Not there yet. Oh, I'm gonna have to go. The flies. <laughs> Crazy. Camera bag, full suspension bike, climbing, doing everything. Hey. What we go through, what, he, what they go through is crazy. What Joey goes through is nuts. Hey. Anyway, moving 
is better than standing still because of the flies. Listen, listen to this. Nothing, nothing. You cannot hear anything. It is so quiet up here. It's like, it's majestic. <laughs> well, literally I'm riding into the mystic. So I've been climbing for at least 45 minutes now. It's just been zigzagging, zigzagging, zigzagging constantly. The trail's amazing, the trail's beautiful. It's just, a, it's a good climbing trail. It's just super smooth, super flowy. It's like a flowy climb, but you get to these little punchy corners, these like chicanes that are, ooh, take it out of you. Okay, I've run out of water. I'm pretty sure we're pretty high up. That water down there is gonna be fresh. So I'm gonna go fill my water bottle up. This water is refreshing. Beautiful. Can't beat mountain water. Wow. It's emotional, really, because I've just, well, Joey and I have literally just climbed up the steepest climb that we've ever had to do on a mountain bike. But when you presented with this incredible view, oh man, this is why I ride bikes, 100%, just to get to locations like this. Mountain bikes are incredible. Look at it. There's bears down there. Over there, you can see them. Do you want a top tip? Oh man, top tip, right? It's super hot. Oh, top tip. Oh, that's so good on my butt. Oh, that's so good on my bum. So good on my bum. Oh, All right, top tip. Ice or snow. Jam it in your helmet. Chuck it all in there. Like that, like that. And then when you're climbing, it's so refreshing. It just melts. Sometimes you get an ice headache. Sometimes you do, sometimes you do, and sometimes you do, you get an ice headache. But it is so refreshing. Holy moly, that's a hell of a climb. Hell of a climb. Oh, I need my sandwich now. I'm pretty hungry. We're at the top. Oh, my little pro tip, putting snow in your helmet. You get such a headache. Hang on. Oh, but it's refreshing. We are at 1,778 meters. And my little graph right on my computer here is showing green down, which is amazing. Look at this, look at this. We are gonna go down through here, past that lake, past another lake, and then descend into Whistler Valley off this mountain. I, I, I just wanna get away from these flies, man. These mosquitoes, they're everywhere. Anyway, let's go find a spot for lunch. Now I'm gonna talk some stats about this trail, because you might be interested in doing it one day, and I highly recommend it. Just make sure you like climbing. Oh, man. This is dreamy. I love it. Oh, the lake. 
like the lake. Oh, oh. Finally made it to the lake. I'm gonna have a sandwich and I'm gonna have a dip in this very Arctic water. It's gonna be freezing. It's so clean. I reckon I could drink it, but probably shouldn't. But anyway, <sighs> should I go naked? Should I, should I? <laughs> no, someone might come and see me. So we're in the lake and it's bitterly cold. <laughs> Joe got in and he screamed <laughs> with excitement saying this was incredible, but the mosquitoes, mosquitoes are for real right now. They're everywhere. There's so many. There's so many. We've been in the water now for at least five minutes in this Baltic. Oh my God, I'm so cold. <laughs> ow, ow, my feet, my feet, ow, my feet. That's incredible. This descent is incredible. It's super flow, it's tacky, it's fun. It's not super, super challenging like it's a double black. It is a blue flow, but it is. Oh my God, dude. Fun. Let's crack off. Look at it. Oh my gosh, my legs are getting a workout. After that climb, and then just bra, bra, bra. Oh, my thighs are on fire. But I don't, I can't, I just don't want to stop. But it's a fucking incredible trail. To be honest, it's probably one of the best trails I've ever ridden. No lie, no lie. I flipping love it. And on the hardtail as well, it's, just brings a whole new level of roughness. <laughs> Mother of Moses. That, that's it. That is the end oh. of that. Hey, that track was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the last bit, he was actually hanging out as a hoop at the top. He was dead. So was I. Anyway, let's get to the lake at the bottom. There we go. The end. The end. The end is here. Lord of the Squirrels. Basically, it's not just Lord of the Squirrels. You have to ride a few trails to get to the top, so like into the majestic, uh, into the majestic, into the mystic, majestic. I am so tired right anyway. There's, you gotta hit a few trails to get to the top and it is a lot of climbing. 1,457 meters of climbing. It's about 39 kilometers. We did it in eight hours, but we were filming quite a lot. So that hence why well, that took a long time. But I did say four to 10 hours, depending on how fit you are. Talk about that, it is a black diamond climb. Just to let you know, it is a big, big climb, but the descent is well worth it. 
It's incredible. And a dip in the lake is well needed after that big ass climb. You might be wondering what the hell's going on right now. Basically, we went for a ride and this happened. We're stuck on a hill, broken chain, bowhead pulling bowhead. And we're running out of light. But oh. the dust just snapped. If you want to see how we got here, then start watching. Yeah. So we're at the top of the car park. What's this place called? This is called Diamondback Car Park. Um, we're going on a trek, but as we were coming up the hill, we discovered that no one we're with knows anything about the trail. And all they said was, put chili sauce on your legs because you want the bear to start there. That's literally what they told That's me. That's what they said. Because we haven't got bear spray. So we're just going to sprinkle, actually, Tabasco all your snacks, right? Yeah. Tuck them in your socks. <laughs> actually, you can carry all the snacks, Mr. Ashton. I'm not carrying the snacks, no way. You carry the snacks. I'm not putting these on now. Right. I'm on my hardtail. Meine Fahrrad Eist Butterblume. If you understand German, you'd know what that means. Anyway. Let's crack on. <laughs> right, I followed this guy, right, down Whistler Bike Park, but you were on your... The you, Reach. The Reach. <laughs> now you're on this thing, how do you find it? Find it? Uh, I like this bike. But for going downhill, maybe it's a better the other one for me. Like other guys like the RX, but yeah, I like the handlebar. Yeah, Mr. Ashton. I do love the reach, but the reach is better than me. So I like the RX because I kind of like earn my moments. They tend to be my riding skill that didn't, but on the, the reach can do all of it. And in all honesty, I can't. So I think I'm fitted better to this one. I Whereas Guga can do yeah. all of it. He can do all of it, yeah. He can, he can. Right, look, look at this thing. Beautiful. We are at uh, the trailhead for Elfin Lakes in the Garibaldi Highlands. We're at about a thousand meters right now. We're gonna head up uh, 640 meters. Then we're gonna maybe go for a swim and then rip back down all the way down into town at basically zero. Okay, so we are on the trail. I'm following Guga in the red helmet. That is Sam in the green top and white helmet and then the owner of Bowhead himself, Christian Bag, at the front in the black helmet. Sally, she is riding up next to Christian and she works for Bowhead uh, and is an absolute trooper. She keeps getting us out of all sorts of trouble. She's been using ropes to tie bikes back together and all sorts, but we're trying to do this thousand meter climb we're about a hundred meters in. I think everyone's feeling pretty good, but we shall see. It's quite a long way to go yet. <laughs> <laughs> This is how it's done, huh? Hey? Yeah. No messing about. This is no messing about. <laughs> yeah. It's really hard climbing, even though I'm getting towed up. What do you think? Yeah, it's pretty fun. Mr. Bing bong. What do you think of that? I've seen 10 bears. 10 bears? At least 10 bears. What? I was, uh, well, yeah, you've got I, to hold food out for them. Try it. No. Hold food out for a bear. No, thank you.
Okay, story, quick one. Mr. Ashton's actually lost his mobile phone. Misplaced it somewhere in Worcester Village. <sighs> story now, I just found Christian's phone. He doesn't know he's dropped it, but I just seen it on the trail. <gasps> Look. Oh, oh no. find his keepers, lose his weepers, or obviously I'm gonna give it back to him, you know. Right, but the view, look at that mountain over there. Look at it. The view, we've just come down, well, we've just come up from the valley, literally right down there. I think we've got another thousand feet to go. A thousand meters, I mean. Anyway, we're nearly at the top. It's a brutal climb. It's actually, I like, it's quite nice. Being towed, and now I'm pedaling on my own. It's really nice, Hardtail's doing his job, man. Christian, you lost something very precious to you. Uh, it's because... Blake, Martin, have you got my phone? Martin's my uh, yeah. I just wanted to emulate Martin. Here you go. Thank you. Found a phone for you. Jeez. <laughs> that would have been pretty funny. Man, we've still lost yours, though. God damn it, Blake. <laughs> Come on, man. Look at that. Unreal, isn't it? Look at that. <laughs> Mr. Ashton, what have you done? What have you done, Mr. Ashton? Well, Christian says I was supposed to avoid the rocks, but I didn't. How do you, how do you mean? <laughs> I don't, That's a joke. I never, which, which I mean, I didn't know that, and I didn't, and I got a puncture. You got a punny. I got a punny. We're at the top of the mountain, nearly. Nearly. Or is this a blind summit? It's a blind summit, I know it. I'm not going to be yeah. fooled. Hey, Christian. What do I do? Do I get off? Are we near the top? You actually don't know where we are, do you? I, I have no idea where we are, no. <laughs> I think it looks top-like. I can't see anything higher. We're at the top. We're at the top. We're at the top. Somebody. We're at the top. Oh. We're at the top. Yeah. Um. <laughs> we think. We think. Yeah. We've got to fix a like puncture now. Wow, this is the most flies I've ever seen in my life. We could. I know I'm not doing anything and I feel I quite think, bad. I think this is bacon strippable. I don't know what that means. And bacon, he's yeah. got bacon with him. Yeah. Uh, That's yeah. for the bears. Oh, oh, the flies, the flies. <laughs> <laughs> You've got flies yeah. over there? <laughs> oh, none over here. <laughs> We're getting near the top. These mountains are starting to reveal themselves. Oh, look at this. Look at this. So good. It's kind of evening sunlight, long shadows. Beautiful. Look at that, man. Look at that. It just doesn't get old, does it? Let's do a little end off this rock. Nice. Well, I like that little line. It was fun. I'll just wait for Bing Bong. See what he's up to. Bing Bong! Tell us something about your ride, because I've been having a Last. How's your arms, to be honest? Like, how is your arms? They're pretty numb. <laughs> They're quite numb. The terrain is quite crazy. It's super rocky. But look at that, mine. Unreal, isn't it? Isn't the lake just over there? I don't know, but I just every time we come over a hill, it just looks even better. It's so, so good. It's hey, beautiful. little moment. Oh, should we have a hug? Let's should have a little, guys. A, hug. a little hug. Yeah. Hey, I love this mine. So this great. It's really good, isn't it? Oh, it's we so fun. We are living our best life. We are right now, eh? Right now we are. Yeah. Where's but if that fun? Starbucks is closed, I'm going to go f nuts. Uh, Actually, the last thing I want right now is I don't want anything. I don't. I want a bit, bit of water. Let's water. have a bit of that water. Let's have a little sip yeah. of that water. But other than that, I'm good. There you go. So nice. How far did you go? Yeah. Whoa, that was close.
a tenner you can't hit the camera. You gotta make a proper snowball. I can't. <laughs> it's really cold. <laughs> oh, I see the light through there, look. It's stunning, isn't it? It is stunning. No joke. No. No joke. Look at it. Snow. Bikes, mate. <laughs> it is a pretty perfect piece of snow. Look at that, look at that snow. I dare you to ride through there. Through it? Yeah, go through, I dare you. Is it really? No, nah, it's not deep at all. Get more weight now. Pull away on the back, Martin. Pull away, come on. <laughs> See you later, Matt. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> you <laughs> See you later. <laughs> you I'm stuck. <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus Christ, that's cold. <laughs> <laughs> Made it. Uh, so what we're doing, we want Mr. Ashton to do an endo for a photo that Rob's going to take over there. Hey. I just don't know if it's going to grip. Go for it, Mark. <laughs> ah! Yeah! That was. Let's see the photo roll. Man, it looks like you're crashing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it looks freaking sick. Oh, yeah! Oh, that's very good. That's <laughs> Hang on. That's, sick. Wow, that's Hang on. wicked. Yeah. Hang on. What's going on? Got another one. No. Wow, that's close, man. That's that was, so close. That was a really good. Really good one. Oh, you're so close. It's saw. super wide, man. It's not. I can see myself. I know your your nose looks massive. <laughs> right, we're gonna crack on now. After pumping this up, and uh, we're gonna go down there to the lake. Oh. So the mission is 50-50 complete. We left at four o'clock. It is now 25 to eight. <laughs> Look, see? We haven't got down yet. We, we haven't even got down yet. And 30 minutes and that big ball of light is gonna disappear behind those mountains. 30 minutes. Then we're riding down in the dark. Ah! Stop guess what? Ge <laughs> guess what? Guess what? Mr. Ashton's eyes do not work in the dark. My eyes don't work in the light. It just don't work at all. <laughs> We've made it to Elfin Lake. It's here. Blake's gonna go in for a dip. Oh my God, I've been wanting to see this body all day long. Oh my God, it's even better than I imagined. Come back. I wanna, I just wanna lick your back. Just shut up. That's disgusting. <laughs> I just wanna oh, lick your back, it's a dream. Oh, you made it weird, Martin. Up to nubs. It's cold. <laughs> what God. kind of lake is it? A bee lake. A mountain. <laughs> Cause I'm in it. A mountain lake. <laughs> Come on, get under. Doesn't count if your head doesn't go under. Oh, okay. Oh God. Ice cream headache time. <sighs> right, done. <laughs> Give me a cold cut, cuddle. How cold are you? Oh. <laughs> Hey, Jesus, kill him. It's really freezing. We've got to get moving because we're losing the light. The sun falls out of the sky, apparently, in Canada. It goes right down. You lose it. Nightmare. Sun's going down. It's about to drop behind that mountain. I just snapped my chain and we're nowhere near down. Panic mode. Wow. What a day.
we've been going. Five hours. <laughs> We're stuck on this one climb. Everyone. Martin's chain snap. In a tube that was towing Martin with Sam, that snap. But we've got literally one strap left. One strap left. One strap to roll them all. It's incredible. But look, you can just see with the horizon behind us, the light is going fast. <laughs> Hopefully you've eaten your carrots. That's what I can say. Okay, Sam's pulling me. We couldn't fix the chain. Not on the trail. We've got to get back before the light goes. So, Sam's being a hero again. He's fixed my punctures. He's done all of it. And now he's towing me back. We've just got one little hill to do and then it's all downhill. So the saga continues and the dramas continue. Don't they, Christian? Yeah, yeah. Martin. It's not, and it's not Christian, it's Martin, again. So we've managed to somehow fix the uh, rear with this thing. There's a little punny there, but that's okay. He has no chain, yeah, but this has happened. Yeah. What have you got to say for yourself, Martin? <sighs> Bad line choice. Story, <laughs> story is all you. Look at that, look at this. Bad Come on, on, Mr. Ashton, the sun's gone. I know. Oh, and the, the bears come out in the dark. No, they, they do. don't, do they? Yeah, and the hyenas. <laughs> that, that was a lie. <laughs> it was also not a word. Hyena. Hyena. Uh, you said, you said hyena. Don't you know what a hyena is? I know what a hyena is. I know what a hyena is. I don't know what a hyena is. Man, if you're from Zimbabwe, you call him whatever, man. It's a wild you dog. You use that as your excuse yeah. for everything. I do. I do. Right. Okay. So yeah, you just. That's a that's a good idea. You can just put it oh, under yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, I, I thought you were gonna smash him in the head. Oh no. no, no. <laughs> 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 The Everyone bugs are incredible. Look, look everyone loves that. Yeah. Like, Stop! Like pump! Them, you are. Stop filming your <laughs> pump! <laughs> <laughs> We only bloody made it. We made it out to the bottom of the mountain. The light is going. I thought for a moment I was gonna get eaten by a bear. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong. It's exactly how a day out with Christian and the Bowhead team <laughs> always goes. It's adventure week and we couldn't do this. Like going on our own mini adventure. Yes, Neil, we're gonna go bike packing again. Love it, I can't wait to do this again. Got my uh, Canyon Lux Cross Country bike fully loaded up. What bike are you riding, Blake? Oh, he's, he's done it again, Neil. I'll be back in a bit. He's new. <sighs> I knew it. I've told him before. He's gonna get fat if he keeps eating here. Yeah? Right, that's it. Enough eating burgers, you. I know, I know you're hungry. You're always hungry. Constantly eating. Surprised you're not fat. There he is. Wow. <laughs> this uh, the dude. I hope we're not riding in any single track because that is approximately four foot wide. Well, you know, he is full fat, and I just went into the um, Topeak catalog and pulled everything I wanted. Everything. I'm carrying everything. I hope you've got sink as well. Neil. Have you got the hip flask? The hip flask? No, that was your job. Because I have. Hey. Tell you what, you won't lose me. You'll hear me coming. <laughs> The trail, well, our backpacking experience starts in Merthyr Tydfil. Yeah. We're in South Wales, and it's an old railway line that we're following. Yeah, this is the Brecon's Bash. It starts to go up onto the Brecon's out into open a place. Uh, I've always driven through here, but never actually been and stopped and ridden my bike around here, so can't wait to see what it entails. <laughs> My bike smells very fresh. Like a horse. Like a horse. I can smell it from here. This is quite steep. Steep.
likes molesting cows. Maybe not like that. Oh, I love Highland cows. I don't want to mess with that one though. Look at that one. That's daddy. Don't mess with daddy. I'm starving, Neil. Oh, well, it's a good time here to come for blackberries, I suppose. Oh, yeah. Ten kilometres in, I'm ravenous. Loads of them. Oh. Yeah. But we're going to have to forage our way all the way over that hill to get to camp. I hope not. But you know, I smelt something really burgery. Something greasy. I think Fatty didn't leave empty-handed when I went and found him at the flipping burger place, man. The dude abides. It's coming from. Oh my goodness me! Look, Neil. Two burgers. That's literally fast food. I don't like chicken. I don't like mayo. You don't like chicken, Art? <laughs> I'll have it. Yeah! <laughs> I think my cheese sandwich looks way better. Cheers. Refueled with some questionable nutrition, we checked our route on the Garmin, which appeared to lead us into, well, apparently nothing. Neil? Straight that way where there isn't a trail. Well, there's nothing. Well, there's only one way to find out. That is a beautiful view. Wow. And we're going that way. And you think the, the ultimate all-terrain bicycle is the fat bike? Let us know in the comments down below. Neil, yeah. don't you think the fat bike's the ultimate all-terrain bike? Well, it depends how you look at it. I mean, they are, but that is pretty unique to look at. I think you look sexy. <laughs> Don't you? No. All right, Neil, we we're at the top of our first ascent. Yeah, a bit of a headwind, but it's not so bad. It's been quite dry recently, so the more rolls all right. Especially with the big fatties, I suppose. <laughs> all right, I'm rolling super quick. Yeah. We're at uh, the top of this climb. There's a quarry. And on the map, because we used uh, bikepacking.com yep. to find this map, and uh, it says get your Danny McCaskill on. So we might just roll down some stuff. Or like Chris Ackery. Or Chris Ackery. Kind of more Chris Ackery. But yeah. And then we're going that way. Riding into an old abandoned quarry, Neil was consumed by a sense of deja vu, adamant that he'd been here before. Turns out he'd ridden here over 14 years ago on a photo shoot for a mountain bike magazine. Check this out! Uh, so ridden up like 360 views and we're up this sort of gnarly old disused quarry and uh, Blake has found something he wants to ride down. I don't want to ride down that. <laughs> Bikepacking is amazing. I've this is the third time I've done it, and I'm hooked. I would love. I, could, I wish I could do a lot more. Uh, it's amazing because you get to explore places that you wouldn't even go. Well, you wouldn't even think of it. Like I wouldn't think of coming up here. Oh, the bog bashing. Yes. Now it was quite wet right up the top. We kind of descended from this old quarry, and then it was just bog after bog after bog, and it. We got a bit muddy and it was a bit stinking because that place is full of sheep. And there's so many landmines coming out this one place. Landmines as in cow poo everywhere. Riding in the middle of nowhere is great, but you've certainly got to be cautious because if anything goes wrong, you've only got yourselves to fix it. Oh my, oh my goodness me. I thought I was going over the bars! <laughs> I 
Hunter. Definitely have to sort of relax a little bit on the descents. I mean, just sort of the whole day really, but try and preserve your bike a bit. It's not really about bombing down hills. Big old rock. Ah. It's done, there's no plug in that, I went down. I was scared I was gonna get a puncture. Imagine the punk, do you reckon if, if my tire burst, do you reckon I'll be like a cartoon bubble? You know, when they burst and they go <laughs> It's funny, like Blake's riding the fat bike, I'm riding a super light cross country bike, but it feels like we kind of roll the same. It's weird. <laughs> so we're just settling in now for the biggest climb of day one to go up onto the ridge of Penny Fan and then drop down to Brecon. We're starting off on the road. And then it must go off road at some point, but it's been good so far. The great thing about bikepacking is you get out into nature, you get to see wildlife, and to be honest, in Wales, there's, there's quite a lot. There's a lot of sheep. It's not wild, but there's some wild-ish wild, uh, wild -ish horses around here in the moors. Um, scared the bejesus out of Neil. These glacially formed valleys have a long history dating back to the Ice Age. What? The movie? Shut up, Scrat. All right, Sid. They've seen all kinds of human industry and have survived it all. And it's one of the most beautiful areas in the United Kingdom. We're lucky to have it so close to our doorsteps. As day one drew to a close, we dropped into our final descent below Penny Fan. There's been good shots coming down here, hey, huh? There's something about bikepacking, it's just, does make it feel like an adventure, just taking a tent with you and all your kit, all your food, all your supplies for the day and just getting out. And like, we're not that far in the middle of nowhere. Like I do know this area a little bit. I used to race downhill all around here. But sort of like Blake said, I would never get out into the sort of wilds a little bit more and see stuff. Neil, the sun is just about to go down over those hills. Like Penny Fan. Penny Fan. We just descended through that place just over there, that go that valley. Through there, we're coming. Introduced to this gate. Gate, open the gate. And we're gonna descend all the way into Brecon. <laughs> Two kilometers of this. We're gonna to go to a campsite where we're gonna stay the night, potentially walk into town, have some dinner. And then, go to bed. Surprisingly, my big fat tires did not get any poor. Neil, you got fresh sheep poo stick. Look at that bit, look at that. Look, disgusting, Neil, <laughs> disgusting. Finally, Neil, oh, showers. It's been a long day. Has been. The sun is down. Hang on a minute. It's, it's shut. shut. It says it's shut, Neil. I'm sticking my tent wherever. I don't yeah. care. <laughs> oh, f yeah, f it. Right. Run time lapse. If only we were as good as setting up our tents as we were as riding our bikes. Can't remember which end it goes if you put... Neil, do you know what you're doing? Uh, I can't remember really, but you know, here goes nothing. Look at the size of that thing. Whoa. Solid as a rock, mate. <sighs> Big Sorry. fatty, ain't going nowhere. Step two. Better get these up quick because it's getting dark. It is getting dark. Oh, did you break it? Mine just fell over. It's good when you get a campsite and the ground is perfect to yeah, just it's really soft. push in yeah. pegs. What are these clippy bits for? 
bits. Those clippy bits are for your range uh, shield thing. Ah, oh, right, yeah. You done yours yet, Neil? No. You got all these crazy humans out here with their crazy expensive, like, camper vans. All you need is a bike. Easy. I bloody love this tent setup. It's freaking good. It's not very taut, is it? No, because this peg's come out. Oh. It's really dark now. We're in Brecon, in the Brecon Beacons. <laughs> Funny that. I think we're gonna have a shower and then go straight to bed because tomorrow is even longer. All right. After a quite long, slightly cold, and a bit uncomfortable night in the tent, dawn broke on another beautiful day in Wales. Beautiful morning, Neil. It's beautiful. Hell of a sight. We're going to go find some breakfast because we don't have anything. And it's down this way, on a horrible road. So, we ran out of inner tubes, so we're going to come to this local bike, park, bike shop to get some inner tubes. Because we don't want to get a puncture far away, deep inside somewhere. Look at the size of my inner tube. <laughs> Don't stay in the middle. Carry it! Oh, yeah. oh wow. There's a big guy. <laughs> it's gone from a morning, well, chilly sunny, mor sunny morning to uh, quite a sweaty sunny morning, eh? Good view. We've just uh, cycled from Brecon, which is over there, beyond that tree, all the way through and up this climb. You can see the hills that we went over yesterday. Yep. But we're going up there. Yeah, amazing view up here. I think now we're heading down and around and back over there somewhere. Nice descending through here. With all those big climbs behind us and those rolling grassing meadows in front of us, we could sense the end was near with blackberries eaten, muddy bogs crossed and 108 kilometers with our tracks stamped into the dirt we are ready to hit our final few miles ahead of us. It's been a great couple of days on the bike, and of course, you can't finish a bike packing trip without going to the pub for some refreshments. Hell yeah! Lovely. Done it. Oh, we've just gone and done it, Neil. Two days. Two good days. Two amazing days. Today was quite hard. What? Not big, gonna lie. Big day out. Yeah. That's it. I uh, hope you've enjoyed Adventure Week. Uh, loads of good stuff. Hopefully it's uh, inspired you to go out and do your own mini adventure of some yes, sort. Yes, go and plug in a, a route that you want to go and do. Someone's getting 
wet feet. Oh, this is this is sad times. Nominative determinism is essentially the hypothesis that people tend to gravitate towards area of work that fit their names. Arctic explorers may have snow in their surname or a runner named Swift, maybe. In this case, though, it's pain, which leads me to where we are today. I'm here in Conway, one of the most northerly points of Wales, and about 200 miles in that direction lies Swansea, the end point to this challenge. Now, we all know I love a good challenge here at GMBN, and it got us thinking, just how far can Rich ride in 24 hours? Well, there's only one way to find out. With a summer schedule so packed, taking the time out to do something like this is often pretty tricky. So here we are, end of February and going for it. 24 hours in February. Well, unfortunately, a lot of those hours are gonna be in the dark. So I've teamed up with Magic Shine to help light the way where I'll be using the Montier 6500S bar mounted light with remote to illuminate the trail. This little beauty is gonna give me, you guessed it, 6500 lumens. And with four different light modes from 100% down to 10, Magic Shine reassure me that the battery can last up to a staggering 82 hours, all for 260 quid. Then on my helmet is the RN 1500, giving another 1,500 lumens. And with the ability to run up to 11 hours, this combo is gonna be unreal when it gets to those darkest hours. And just to be on the safe side, out back is the CME 30 flashing away. For such an immense task, required carrying a lot of equipment. And I don't normally take a backpack, but this time I did. I chose to take the Camelback Mule Evo. With all weather protection, it was lightweight. I barely knew it was there and had just about the right amount of space to take everything I needed. Why North Wales then, I hear you ask? That makes absolutely no sense, especially in February. Well, when you do an epic, or when I certainly do an epic, I like to explore at the same time. I like to get out there, I like to see new places. So with a little bit of research, I found out about something called the San Helen Way, an old Roman road that traversed from the top of Wales to the very bottom. The San Helen Way is an ancient Roman road that used to run down the length of Wales, and to this day still exists in some form. While the original route is somewhat in debate, this ride's gonna take me first through the Snowdonia National Park, then traverse the Cambrian Mountains before finally tackling the Brecon Beacons to the south. All in all, about 300 or so kilometers, around 190 miles, with over 5,000 meters of climbing in winter. Bring it on. So it is the morning of the challenge, and I wasn't really sure how to feel on this one because it's not like anything I have done before. I've done long days. This was nuts. And I don't know, it had me in mixed feelings as to, do I attack it? But I was like, no, don't do that because that's nuts and I'll never sustain that for such a long period. Can I even ride for 24 hours? Yeah, mindset wise, I was just like, well, it's definitely gonna be a case of mind over matter. Cause I think when you get some really dark or low points in the ride, it'll be, your, it'll be up here that gets you through it, not your legs. The legs will just keep turning. So that, that was kind of how I decided to tackle it really, just in a smiley, positive fashion to just keep on going. No doubt this would be tested over the route. So luckily I had some really encouraging messages from my family and missus who've always been there to help keep me motivated. And even a message from my nan who I think may have jinxed the weather. Hi Rich, hope you don't get too wet tomorrow. I've got plenty of warm clothes. Okay, and do good, do well. Okay, take care. Love you loads, bye. That's enough of that though, Nan. It was time to saddle up and get on out there. Okay, 9.30, Conway Castle, starting, it begins. See you in a bit, see you guys. So we started in Conway and the weather was pretty minging and the first bit of the ride was fairly straightforward. It was a big bit of a road stint to get down to Betsy Code, big off-road centre, 
just churning out those road miles, no problem. And then this is where it was going to really kick in. We head into you know, proper Snowdonia National Park. And I turn left off the main roads. And the first climb I hit, I start going up, I get up and I cross this bridge. And then after that, it was just an unrideable mess full of these massive boulders. And basically where the weather, such bad weather we've been having, had just washed out and it was like a stream. Oh, this is depressing. Another big, long push up. It's so steep and it's so boggy that I'm just wheel spinning. And to try and ride up, it's just counterproductive and just burning energy for no reason. <sighs> just hike a bike and push in. It was horrendous. It was such, it's kind of demoralizing already. And then, so I get past that bit, get back on the bike and things. And then the next big bit I get to, I'm riding up through, through a forest. I don't know the name of it, but I'm riding up through this forest and I get to an area, I'm following the GPS, all's looking good. And I get to this area where it suddenly opens up and I guess forestry have been through and logged everywhere and there's just nothing. There's no track. I'm looking up the mountain, nothing. Looking down the hill, nothing. I'm like, well, I've got to keep going. Jeez. Hike a bike time. That's so all I could do is actually walk straight up. I'm still following the route. All I can do is just walk up the mountain. I get to the top of the mountain. Okay, well, that was annoying, but positive mindset, keep on going. And then it's like riding across a sponge for flipping ages. The ground was saturated. Oh, man. I basically at the top of Snowdon, Snowdonia National Park, and it's saturated. So much so, look, bike's just sunk. Standing up by yourself. Feet. Yeah, you gotta love these challenges. I mean, it's pretty epic up here, though. This is unreal, look. Just riding a massive slate mine. Look at that. I tell you, Wales never fails. I love it up here. Uh, let's grab a quick bite to eat. Yeah, all good. The weather's not playing ball at all. It did sort of stop for a bit, and now it looks like this. And it looks like this for the foreseeable future as well. Looks pretty grim, but I don't know. 35, 40K? Probably about 35, 40K, actually. It's not too bad. Just trucking on, really. Mm, right, can't stop. Oops. Yeah, I can stop. Where's my pocket? Cool, see you in a bit. I'm sticking to the game plan, not pushing on too hard. Doesn't look very nice out there, look. Whew. I figured stopping little and often and like keeping warm, where we are now, which I don't know where we are, is very, very windy and a very, very horrible headwind. Um, so I thought to warm the cockles. Or whiskey was a bit much, maybe. Oh, that's hot. What's the cockle? Warmy cockles, isn't it? I don't know, you just say it in a Somerset accent and it sounds proper. You got cockles not need to warm in? Well, they're warm now. How's everything feeling, Rich? Everything feel good on the bike? Feeling good and looking good, my friend. You know it. There is a bit of a headwind along the river, just kicked in. I can do one. Also, one for all of you guys. Might just be worth double checking before we get too remote. Uh, that all the tracking stuff's working, so uh, WhatsApp stuff, like the Garmin one especially for when I'm in the middle of nowhere. Just make sure that's all working. I don't want to get lost and be in the middle of nowhere.
So Snowdonia was epic, very wet, more rain, pretty grim, I'll be honest. It was some challenging times riding across all the open marshy kind of land at the top, but always try and take the positives. And I think, right, okay, we'll break it down in sections. That's one mountain range done. I ticked it off. Richard, looks like you're closing in on back. Uh, we are there, we are parked on the high street. Uh, we have some food to you, probably. Uh, that was horrible. That's two massive climbs. Just straight up and over the mountains to get in. At the top of one of them, it was horrendous weather. It was proper, like, just sideways rain and really cold. Yeah, let's eat. I'm starving. How far in are we now, Richard? 100 kilometers. Yeah, 100k in. I think we've just done a couple thousand metres climbing now as well. But it's time for a proper stop. We've not proper stopped yet, or I've not proper stopped. And I feel like I need it now. I need to sort of eat, kind of regroup, reset, chip on more climbs, isn't it? And this is the last stop now before actual darkness sets in. Because I think once we get going after this, that's it then really, it's, it's doom and gloom time. Well, you can see it's definitely getting darker. I've just had my early dinner stop, as it were. I don't want to get too cold. The lights have had to go on. That Montier 6500S, primed and ready. All the lumens to keep me going, but I'm out of here. I got to keep on trucking because I want to get this done. I'll see you in a bit. Oh, I don't know if you can see me, but we're heading into darkness. It's officially the start of the night shift. And the start of the night shift is big old uphill. Someone's getting wet feet. The amount of rain we've had is nuts. I'm gonna go try and find a shallower spot to cross. Oh man, it's not warm. Update for you. I've had to pull over because I am Hank Marvin. We are nine hours solid moving time in. It's five to nine at night. So we're near the halfway point, 3,000 meters up. But yeah, it's just uh, just hit me a little bit. So I've just pulled over. Snack it. It's very eerie up here. I mean, there's no lights. All I can hear is trickling water in the foreground somewhere. Oh man, I'm getting battered by the weather. And the first real test would come on this massive, massive hill climb. It felt like I was climbing for about an hour. I'm sure it wasn't, but it was hammering down. Just rain, just battering down. And I was there, I'd had to put another coat on because I was getting a bit cold. And I was all wrapped up and uh, I'm just trudging, literally just trudging up this hill, mega slow, rain's battering down. We're chipping on nicely. There seems to be a slight obstacle in the way. Oh, hell. That's massive. All right, show you must go on, find a way around. Yo, how's it going? Tough along there, bud. Nine and a half hours riding time so far. It's half nine at night as well. 155k. We're heading somewhere, but where are we heading? It's only going to get later from here. It's going to get wild. From Rayada then, which was roughly the halfway point, and coincidentally, actually, I got to the halfway distance mark in under half the time, so in under 12 hours. Only 12 more hours to go. Uh, sorry, I should have said that. That's, that's too mean. Also, if you're heading into thick fog right now, you're going to be getting pretty close to, to me and Ben sat at the top of the mountain waiting for you. All right. Ooh. Ooh. 
Oof, that was cold coming down there. Really cold. I need to get my coat and that on and warm up a bit. That was the first time I was properly cold coming down there off the top. It was really foggy at the top, or it was a cloud or something. Oh, yeah, all charged. I'm sticking to the route on the sat-nav, uh, like the GPS, sorry, but there's no path. I'm just walking through grassland at the moment. It's, uh, yeah, it's not good. Walked for about 10k. Yep, just across a bog. Hmm. And that is it, Brecon Beacons ahead. Final mountain range, by no means like, oh, final mountain range, that's easy. Still a huge undertaking ahead. The weather really started closing in on the Breckens as well. Up on the Beacons is, I don't know, it's weird, but it just, the rain was just hammering down. And I was essentially just pushing up a stream, like I was just watching the water run down over my feet. Then you get to the top oh and the flipping wind's picked up. So now I'm battling a headwind with the rain just battering on my face. Oh, this is, this is sad times. I'm pushing down some of this downhill because my wrists are just so sore. I've never had that before. Oh, here we go, right, let's give it a go. Borida and good morning from Brecon. Pretty much a normal day today. It's going to be cold, dark and filthy wet. But there is change in the air, I promise you. And we have a big, dirty wind coming in from the west. Enough, surely, to force those stupid enough to be out to retreat to the bar for a couple of pints and a pig leg. Take it easy, my lovelies. Got to about 6am and I hadn't still slept. I'd just been trucking and I did start to feel like I could feel when I was on the easier spinning parts, my eyes were like, oh, well, I'm starting to get a bit tired here. And I'm with one of the cameramen at this point and we get, we get a bit lost again and we're just going through these huge, like four by four tracks, because that is where the path went, but I didn't, I didn't know it was used by four by fours. And there's just these monstrous puddles and boggy areas again, just from the weather we've been having. Mentally, I was okay, body thighs, like, I'd not talked about either body up to now much because actually it had been doing all right. But by this point, all my joints are starting to get sore just from cheek, like, you know, my wrists were really aching. My knees were starting to just throb. So we start to drop off, drop off the Breckens. We're getting down there. So we, yeah, we, we're heading down, heading towards the final, the final stretch, if you like, to meet the rest of the crew. And I like, we get a bit lost. I'm like, Louis, I, you know, this is nuts. I can't. I can't just get lost and keep going around. So we f we figure out a different route. All right. Oh, done and dust. That's 24 hours in the books. 265k. Yeah, it was it was rubbish. I had a bit of a hissy fit, and we had to find another way down. So I was like, F this is just not fun. Just walking on. Boulders, basically. Ah, yeah. yeah, and I can't. I just can't be asked that old. So if we, uh, I think it would be cool if we did still finish at Swansea, but I don't want to ride up there. I'm, I'm pretty cooked. But I was like, boys, that Swansea's not far away. It's, it's in our sights. I know we've been going 24 hours here. What do you reckon to keep going? And they were like, if you're up for it, I was like, it'd be cool to get to the end. So we kept on trucking. Cool. We'll see you in a minute. Ooh.
to the den. Little extra distance, little extra time, but we finally landed in Swansea. But we'd made it to Swansea. We'd got to the beach. We'd gone from the top of Wales all the way to the very bottom in a one -er. No sleep, no change of clothes, bike worked faultlessly, lights worked faultlessly. I was like, it's, it's, we've done it. Body worked faultlessly until I stopped and then basically I just seized. I was like, ah, but it's crazy. It's crazy. This is, there's a big one. It was a big challenge this one, it was tough, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed it after completing it. I'm only kidding. It was fun at the time as well. I love to, I love to be pushed, I love these challenges. Oh my gosh. First lift, single line, obviously, because I have no mates. Oh well, this should be a fun day. I can't wait, there's a new A-line bit. They've been fixing everything. <laughs> nice. Oh, ticket time. Do, 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 do. <laughs> what? Ticket in Oi, oh, what's going on? Oh, are you there? You've tried 10 times. Can you get out of here already? Oh, come on, Adam. Let me in, man. No, get out of here, mate. What am I going to ride? <gasps> I know. It's a hell of a ride, though. It's a big pedal up. I know where to go. <laughs> Follow me. This is my epic ride, the Whistler Blackcomb. So my pass has run out for the mountain, but the day is not over. It is not even a hiccup. I know some cool trails up in Blackcomb. I'm gonna go ride Dark Crystal. I've heard about it, I've heard it's amazing, so I'm gonna go ride that. But it is a hell of a pedal, all the way to the top of this mountain. The weird thing is, you know you can catch a lift to the top of the mountain, you don't even have to work your ass off, get your fix of downhill. For this, I'm gonna have to work for it. That's why it's gonna be epic, because I'm gonna have to do an hour's climb to the top of Blackcomb and then drop into Dark Crystal. I kicked off my climb from the bottom of Black Coon Village. It was a six kilometer climb to the top of Dark Crystal, climbing 668 meters to the peak height of 1282 meters above sea level. The descent was 2.8 kilometers of loamy goodness. First climb from the village, Black Coon Village, all the way up the ski run. Ooh, I'm gonna be using the SRAM Eagle. That's for sure, because it gets steeper. Oh, I'm feeling tired right now, I'm not. Oh wow, it's a warm day. I'm not even halfway, but this section here is really steep. Right at the beginning of the climb on this fire road is steep. And it just traverses through, goes up there above me. And then from there, oh, it just climbs through the woods. You go past Crazy Train, Hey Bud, carry on all the way through out of the dust trail. And I think Hey Bud and Crazy Train are halfway too dark crystal. I'm gonna carry on climbing. Oh, this, Ooh, that was a, it's kind of flattened out. I'm gonna go into the open now, onto the ski slopes. There's a sign here that says, home run. Does that mean I'm nearly there or does that mean I'm not even halfway. Oh man. Ooh. It's so much fun. This is an epic ride in itself. <laughs> Nearly there. Oh. One little bit. One little bit. Oh. 
out of the dust. I made it. Look. Out of the dust. Warnings. Do not enter. Do not enter danger. Okay, I won't go in there. It's telling me not to go in there. This is the wood bit now. Just climb up the fire road. Now we're a single track. Climb up to uh, Crazy Train and Hey Bud, which I'm gonna stop for a little break. Whew. All right, let's carry on through the woods. This looks sick. Better than fire road, that's for sure. Fire road's so boring. All right, let's go. Wow, cool. <laughs> oh, oh. Right. The T junction. You got crazy train, you got hey but I rode crazy train yesterday on a hardtail. Now that was something, that was an experience. But dark crystal is up here. I got told that this point is halfway point. Okay. As long as it's like single track like this and not fire road, it'll be more exciting. These fire roads are boring. I'm gonna continue up here to the top of the trail, Dark Crystal. <laughs> I'll see you at the top. We got a cool river crossing. Might have some, might have a drink of water. Fresh mountain. Water, nice. Uh, you know I said there wasn't gonna be more fire road. Well, there's more fire road. Might even fill up my camel back with water actually. Just replenish my water. Cause that, so far that's been 52 minutes of climbing, a bit of stopping obviously, to film a few bits. But look at this. Oh, got wet feet. My back is all filled up. Now to continue climbing all the way to the trailhead of Dark Crystal. Woo, that water is fresh. I fell in. I got a shoe full of water. I just gotta carry up this fire road and we were there. <laughs> what a climb. Oh. Crystal chair, bike tracks this way. Oh, I think I'm close. I think I'm close. Oh, there it is. Dark crystal. Whoa. Right, before I drop in, I'm gonna have a lunch because that was an epic climb to an epic descent. Oh, right, all fueled up and ready to rock and roll. A little history about this, this uh, trail though, is that it was an illegal trail a few years ago and it's just recently that's been open to the public and the mountain as in Whistler Mountain have taken charge of maintaining the trail so back in the day pirate trail you'd have to uh, cycle up this fire road and this fire road is a working road and it's a, you're not allowed to cycle on these roads because it's super dangerous massive trucks come down it and stuff so if you were caught riding on that fire road, you would potentially and get your lift pass taken away from you and banned. So, hence why it's a pirate trail. They didn't really want to make it an official one, but everyone started riding it and it was a pretty epic trail. So they opened it to the public, not so long ago, for us dudes to shred and have fun. But it hardly gets ridden because it's an epic, epic climb. Right, I'm ready. GoPro's on. Fueled. I'm ready to drop in. I'll see you down there.
I keep saying to Jack, the cameraman, man, let's film this section. Man, let's film this, let's film that. Every, you keep going down the trail and it just gets better and better and better. If you're in Whistler, 100%, pedal up that big ass hill and drop into dark crystal. Look at this line. Look at it. Wow. Amazing. I've been hearing a river every, like, it's getting closer and closer, this river. I think there's a waterfall at the end of this trail. I can't wait to get there. That's gonna look epic. Oh, some North Shore here, just there. Drop down all the way through there, zigzag my way all the way down through this valley, and then down to that river. I splash my face with that water, because I am parched. Literally, so hot. goes from rocky all the way into like loam to rock to loam oh, amazing Look at this! Look at this! <laughs> Woo! Nice! Goes all the way up there! Wow, look at this Alpine River! Man, this one makes an epic ride way more epic. You've got an Alpine River, you're in the Alpines, you've got some rocky terrain, you've got roots, you've got North Shore, big rock rollers, loam, loose dirt, dust. This my friends, is what an epic ride is all about. And I'm telling you, it's probably one of the most favorite trails I've ever ridden in my life. And I'm not even done yet. I still, we still follow this river all the way down. I can see the trail zigzags its way through, snaking through the woods. Ooh, I'm not gonna forget this. I'm never gonna forget this. All right, let's carry on.
Anyway, is that it? Oh my god. That is the end of Dark Crystal. Oh my god. Oh no. I've run out of water. Oh, I would love to do it again, but I am hell riding up that hill again, dude. You can keep that mountain for another day. So there you go, my epic ride down Dark Crystal. It has every single type of terrain that you could want for from a trail. Now I'm heading back to Whistler Village along the fire road. There's that river we we're following down. Wow. Welcome back to you beautiful people. We're out here in British Columbia in Canada and we're in Squamish. We're gonna go find some epic trails. Oh dude, we're not even gonna find epic trails. We're gonna find some of the gnarliest trails out there. I've done a little bit of research, I've asked around it, and I reckon I've got one that's really gonna give you the heebie-jeebies. Ooh, thanks to Abbas for supplying us the Mo Drop. Open face lids to keep yeah. us nice and fresh in this heat that we've got going on here. Yeah, cause we're gonna have to do some climbing. So, there's a reason we look like this. Roll video. Thanks to Abbas for supplying us the Modrop open face helmet, then we headed out onto the trails for a day of wild riding and big smiles. Squamish sits nicely between Vancouver and Whistler Bike Park in the southwest of Canada and has seen mountain biking around it since the mid 90s. It's awash with hundreds of marked trails ranging from blue family tracks to double black diamond trails, all open to the public so anyone can ride them. Today, we're on the hunt for double black diamond trails, the kind of trails that'll make you wince. These tracks are generally the steepest, filled with gaps, drops, and rock rolls you have to clear and ride. They're also littered with rough terrain and aren't to be taken lightly. Right, Blake, we're at the top of Rupert then. This is our, our easy in track. Mm -hmm. We're gonna take a steady down this one. It's not supposed to be too hard. It's got a little black diamond on it, but I think we can definitely find... 91 meters of descending, it's not that much. No. It's gonna be quite... Brr, 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 no, it's only 800 meters long as well, so it is a proper ease into the day, but I've got a feeling things are gonna get a lot wilder. You ready? You following? Yeah, go on. Drop it Ra in! Engage. Access granted. Rupert did not disappoint. No, Apple. no, some good riding straight off the bat there, but I think we can go better. I think we can go gnarlier. What do you reckon? I reckon we will find something a bit more crazy. Yeah. yeah, I think so too. Well, look, let's go get a bite to eat, and then I've heard of one that is pretty special. Oh, what's it? What's it called? Treasure Trail. Treasure Trail. <sighs> Come on, let's go grab a bite to eat and head up. Find let's that treasure. Find that pot of gold. <sighs> BC treasure. Nice. Lemon slice. Oh, what have you gone for? I've just gone for a chocolate chip cookie. Very good. So far, hey. incredible. 
I've never been to Squamish before, mate. I have, but I haven't ridden any of the trails. Mm. I only went up to a lake called Elfin Lake. Elfin Lake? Yes, yeah, incredible, incredible climb. It's a beautiful place here, I gotta admit. The downhills are lovely and varied and natural for the best part, mm. and the climbs, they're pretty punchy. Oh, they are, they are. It's humid as well, even though we're, we're underneath this real thick canopy, the yeah. sun's out, but it is very humid. Guess what, though? I know. Six air inlets, eight outlets. With a bug net. With a bug net. Which, and there are a lot of bugs around uh, today, so. Oh, I smell like bug spray, but yeah, that bug net is an absolute lifesaver. The Abbas Modrop helm is designed for demanding trails with good lower coverage, but also proper venting to allow you to pedal out to the gnarliest trails. It starts off at around 60 pounds, or 70 euros, or 70 dollars. And then there is the version with the Quinn system for around 100 pounds, 120 euros, or 120 dollars. And that has the Bluetooth chip with an acceleration sensor to allow falls to be monitored. The chip connects to an app on your smartphone and can alert an emergency contact in the event of a fall. So we found it, the treasure trail. It's incredible, you kind of kind of traverse across this big granite rock and then it kind of disappears up there, which we have no idea where it goes, but we're going to go find out. We're going in blind for this we one. We are definitely going in blind and I've been told it's uh, quite gnarly mm. from some locals. I'm nervous. You're a bit nervous, yes. <laughs> oh, he's off. Here we go. Here we are then, people. This is the first proper obstacle of Treasure Trail. That first bit was just a teaser, a warm-up. This is pretty steep. Hit it, Blake. Ready for it? I'm ready as I'll ever be. Oh, this, this rock what? is pretty grippy, though. Watch this. Hey, <laughs> nice. That was sick. I should just be riding it. Here's the second wild gnarly section then. It is a mega steep, loose, sort of muddy loaminess. Look at that. Oof. Rock slab down to where Blake is. Don't pile drive into the tree. Don't. Turn right and then go off. Well, we don't know what's here. Go off something. Um, oh my goodness. Does it look good? <laughs> yeah. Should I hit it blind? Well, this, you, this is, don't go off the left. You could, but you drop onto the slab. You can go off here and roll okay. it all the way. Yeah, I think this one's going to be controlling speed down here for sure. For sure, that bit. Yeah, because you could quickly, like, if you let off the brakes, you'd be like rocket shipping over back to Whistler. Oh, 100%. We don't want that. Watch this. Oh, oh, Rich. Where are you going? <laughs> down there, Blake. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that little little hop off that route, like the top section. Don't you think it was like you would not nice make thing, it? Yeah, eh? that was cool, wasn't it? Been real good. Oh, I love it. That keeps you on your toes, stuff like that. So that's nice. I'll tell you what, will keep you on your toes. Look at this old obstacle. Oh, no. Okay, so know. there used to be slats there, but this is the takeoff Boing. onto there. So you like, ring, 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 ring. nice. More because it gets steeper that way. Look at that. It just drops away, doesn't it? Oh. 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 That's a bit wild, blind, isn't it? Gosh, that was wild. That was a bit wild to just go and hit it like completely blind. To flat. Yeah, and you're like, Vroom. oh, there's a turn. Oh my gosh, that was, <laughs> that was to flat. <laughs> I'll just crack on. Whoa, Blake, oh, look at this. Gosh, Rich, I am going to leave this one for you, dude. Mate, I, I when might I be rolled up. in, I saw it, I was like, hell no. That's yeah. out of my jurisdiction. I hate it. Right, this is the bit that I said to Richard he can keep. It's a double step all the way from up there. You got that step there, slow off, dirt on rock, which if you slide in, oh, and then you've got a flat drop down here, which is my height. Look at that. I don't like it, it's a bit techy and bleh for me. And you got all this to go. I'd rather go and do that big rock slab. It's a bit more chill, isn't it? 
feels better than that. That's a bit gnarly for me. Rich, keep, look, it's all the way up there. All the way up there. Disgusting. So I found another one, another rock roll. Whilst, whilst I was riding down through here, uh, it goes down there. It's really disgusting, but I'm gonna do it. Watch this. I tell you that is like riding down a wall. Literally, how steep it is. Fucking horrible. No chance, dude. That that challenging. That one from. Going that one across the wood and then turn and then going this one. Yeah, but let's go and see what Rich has got up to because he was eyeing up that horrible thing. Oh, boys, I'm a bit nervous. I nervous, genuinely. <laughs> oh my fucking goodness. <laughs> I mean, she was... It was rowdy! Yeah! Yeah, <laughs> yeah boys! That's horrible. <laughs> that's, that's... You're in, you're in. Oh my gosh! <laughs> that was tight. Hey, that last one was a bit of a compression. Yeah. Oh, look at this skinny. Oh, that is skinny. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. I'm bowed <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> I'll happily bow out of skinny straight. Oh, up. look how skinny that is. Horrible. I want to do it, I'm though. I'm not a skinny guy. Blake, this is all yours. Yeah, you are. No. Ah! <laughs> Come on. No, skinny. <laughs> oh, no. No, skinny's no. I'm going to do it. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> We've lost him. But fair play, skinnies are not my cup of tea. No, thank you. Nice dude, nailed it. Right, more North Shore. Follow me. So I'm going to come down here, all the way through here. This is wide, so I'm going to use it. And then this log here is kind of bowled out. Look, it's bendy. Yeah. It's twisty. Yeah. Skinny. Yeah. Along here. Yeah. And then it says drop. And then you drop. Whoa. Oh, Look at that. Oh, dude, careful. Careful. And then you drop down there. So I'm going to try that. Oh, that. Look. That's pretty gross, isn't it? Yeah, very gross. Bit, no, very gross. Oh, I could come this way, maybe. Oh, I don't think you're going to have the speed to go here. Well, it's not that far. Yeah, it's miles. Where? Look how big it is, like 20 you foot. Is strong enough for two people on a bike? No, it's not. Get, no, Richard, don't break it, Rich. <laughs> oh, I'll take that. I'll take that as a, a bit of skinny going on. Blake's trying to do the whole thing, and fair play if he gets it. It's really tight and really tricky. I'm happy with the drop, though. Here he comes. Well, it's so nerve-wracking, it's so not even that high off the ground, but it's just being super skinny. Holy moly. 
Let's get out of here. Oh my god. Away. This thing's actually trying to kill us, this track. Yeah. Like this. Well, riding it blind for the first time is gnarly, isn't it? I like, know. if you were local, you would be like. Yeah, but still, it. like, this is a gnarly track. Look at this little jump right here. Like, yeah, it seems yeah like and then this. into that. Incredible. To the next feature. Man. I think that's it. I think, well, I think we're done. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. Welcome back, you beautiful people. And welcome to a two day epic adventure with myself, me, myself, and I, and the camera, and you beautiful people. This trail's been super wet. Very, very wet. Hopefully, you enjoy this video. I need to make it back to the van before it gets dark because it's, it's late. And uh, yeah, enjoy. Ah! Oh. Welcome back you beautiful people and welcome to a beautiful day here in well, in Wales. It's uh, Elan Valley. I'm at Elan Oaks uh, campsite. I'm going to use this place as my base camp because I've got a big route planned and I want to go all the way around these mountains, all the way through here. There's some huge rivers that I'm going to be crossing. It's going to be a wet one, but first I need to pack the essential things. I'm only going out for, it's a big day, so I've got to make sure I take some good snacks. I've got my Garmin with the route all planned on. I've got some uh, lights just in case I get stuck out there in the dark. My essentials in here are, well, I've got a burner and I've got a coffee, I've got an AeroPress. I'm gonna go and find a really good spot for lunch. I'm gonna make some sandwiches. I'm gonna pack my sandwiches in here. And I am going to uh, go and get super wet because um, today there's not much river crossings. There might be a little bit, but tomorrow, ugh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a day. I'm going for a swim multiple times, which I'm looking forward to. No cameraman, just me, my bike, and my thoughts, which are quite scary. Anyway. <laughs> is one hell of an old bridge. I've just come up from the valley behind me and I'm now, well, not at the top top, but look at this view. Oh, it's beautiful, man. <laughs> Basically, I've seen loads of these trails in Elam Valley. We've ridden some of it, we did a night shoot, somewhere over there, I think. And there's an incredible off-road track for vehicles on the other side over there, which we're gonna be riding tomorrow. It's a bit of a challenge because there's a lot of water. If you love opening gates, Wales is the place for that. Haha, <laughs> look at this view behind me. Look at that. So I've parked below the damn wall. So if that thing bursts, which I hope it doesn't, I'll be, I'll be sleeping with the fishies, man. It's getting a bit chilly, actually. A bit cold, I am and a bit of sunlight that I could uh, soak up. I was having a nice hot beverage. That's what I'm gonna do, and a sandwich. So if I was like deep summer, I'd definitely go for a dip here. Today, no. Sheep, whales, full of them. This is the trail that I was thinking about. It is it. I've driven this in my Jeep, it's really good. It's, it's pretty tame, but it's good fun. On the bike, it's rocky. 
there's a horrible river crossing at the at the very end at the uh, reservoir wall so that's gonna be interesting I'm gonna get wet feet I'm gonna get wet legs oh This, this road is rocky, but it's scenic and it's super fun. Look at this reservoir wall. I thought I could smell something dead. Makes me feel sick now. I've just driven, ridden through it. Oh dear. Oh, oh sheep, oh sheep. And it's just like going down there and I just ridden through all that dead sheep water. That's a big wall. Look at it. A feat of engineering that is, I tell you. I wonder how long that took to build. About 10 years. Us. That's beautiful, that is. Nothing beats homemade cake. And a view like this. I absolutely love it. Banana bread it is. Banana bread. The sun's going down, so uh, I don't want to get caught out. I've got lights, but I want to get back. Have a shower, chill, look at the maps again, and reassess. Because uh, tomorrow's going to be uh, interesting. <laughs> There's one thing I like doing, and I don't do it very often, and it's not very well practiced, and that's my photography. I love taking photos, but you get lazy with your camera, especially when you've got your mobile phone in your pocket. But on this little adventure of mine, I'm gonna take some photos. Amazing grace, how sweet the but there's a instrument dumped over here. That's a Stamford Blackstone. That's what that is. Stamford Blackstone. And Co. Limited. That's old, that is. I am no professional. I just try and practice it on my own. I'm, I'm teaching myself. That's what I'm doing. Teaching myself. Look at this sunset. It's just firing down there, Dan. I'm gonna head down there. Look at that. Look at that. I'm gonna go across that bridge. I've ridden that over there in the dark. I've ridden that in the dark, but today we've actually come, look I'll show you. We came from behind this thing, up along the top of that, down there, all the way behind all this, all the way over there, up and over here, then here, to here, to down there. That was a big day. And the stats, as we know it, 26, nearly 27 kilometers, five, nearly six hours. Uh, average speed, yeah, blah, blah. But 700 meters of climbing. Not bad, considering I was like, back and forth, back and forth with the camera. Right, I've moved location, because I'm going to, uh, well, the start and finish on the route I've planned starts here and ends here. So we're back at this big place. We rode past this yesterday. Um, I'm gonna go around this lake, all the way around the back end of it, come down a trail called Strata Florida, which is a, is a byway. So it's open to the public, but it's not suitable for normal vehicles like 
such a van. It is a massive loop. It'll take four hours to ride it uh, all the way around, but I'm going to be filming it and the weather has changed. So I've got more layers on. I'm taking an extra jacket. Where I'm going, Strata Florida is really well known for its river crossings. I'm doing it in winter. It's a bit foggy. Oh man, I've come to the end of the reservoir. That was brutal. It's windy, head on. There's like misty, cold, icy rain. It is about one degree, but I reckon the weather, the, the wind's minus. Adventure! I'm having a slight issue with my maps. Pony? Hello, little pony. Hello, little pony. <laughs> nice. Wet feet now. Maps have taken me off grid. If I can see some uh, some cycle tracks here, it looks like there's nothing here, and it's just like I'm going into the great wilderness. It's a bit daunting, really. I don't know what to expect? I've pegged it out on commute, so it uh, people have ridden it. But it is foggy. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. <laughs> Trust me, I did not put the camera there thinking that was going to happen. <coughs> this is hard. It's difficult. I'm actually getting cold because I'm not really working. I'm just walking and oh, it's actually quite horrible. I have no signal. I do have the garments I could send a distress uh, beacon or an emergency, just, and then it sends me my, my location to my wife and to other people. I don't like it. If I didn't have the garment, I wouldn't even bother get lost up here and freeze. Reason. I think I just needed fueling up. We're, I'm three, three hours in. A little bit more gas. I got some water still, so I can have a hot drink. It's like I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission today. I knew it was gonna be hard, but this is hard. Oh, so good. It's actually easier than I thought. I don't know what I'm worried about. <laughs> Done that. Tick. All right. Let's move on to some. Uh, there's a deep river crossing. <laughs> that was a deep one. Feet are cold, but really fun. So I've done this trail in my Jeep. I've done it on my Africa Twin. Now I'm doing it on a bicycle. Oh. Lit. Oh, it's, it's, it's ice. Look. <laughs> oh, oh. It's gonna be cold. Oh my 
gosh, my legs, man. Right, it's getting late. It's quarter past two. That gives me two hours to get back. And I have actually got quite far to go. Uh, so I'm gonna mosey. So it might be a little bit quick in the edit right now, because I just need to get over this mountain. <laughs> You're on the other side, because I am on the other side. I need to go back over there. That's where I've just come from. Oh. Man, is you down. Got miles still to go. <coughs> I think I've bitten off too much. Oh. I can't see anything, so I have no idea where I am, apart from the purple line on my goat Garmin. Wow! Look at this. It's like I'm somewhere in the States, in America, where it's just vast. And I'm way up in the mountains. Or oh, it's like Patagonia, where it's just open and barren. Oh man, it's incredible. I'm just on the, the line of the clouds. Look at that there. There's a cloud coming in. Would you look at that? Look, it's there. I went on that all the way around there. They're flipping miles down there. Oh, we made it, beautiful people. This section here, demanding. Terrain is horrible, but <coughs> it's worth it. But I wouldn't do it without a Garmin or any other computer that has navigation on because when you get stuck in a place like that Where you can't see the fog is thick You got no reference points or anything you are in danger and I, I Wouldn't recommend you do it because you don't want to put yourself at risk Hopefully you enjoyed this video. It's been absolutely epic especially day two this day I am soaked through but with the correct gear more gear I got waterproof socks on, I got long bibs, I've got layers and layers and layers and plus more layers. Anyway, just remember weather can change. Thank you very much for watching this epic video.